Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the United States Army Galesburg Recruiting Office Virtual Job Fair event. I would like to introduce you to Eric. Eric will tell you about his organization, the job openings, and how to apply for those openings. Eric. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is uh, Staff Sergeant Eric Rear. I'm the station commander for the Galesburg Army Recruiting Station. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to our very first uh, virtual job fair. I thank everyone for attending. Um, basically, what I'd like to do is to kind of introduce myself, give you a little bit of background about myself and about some of our team members here at the recruiting station, and then I'll kind of go over a little bit of uh, some of the things that we have available uh, through the Army, and then we'll open it up to a question and answer session. Uh, so starting off a little bit about me, um, I joined the Army when I was 21 years old, uh, September of 2007. I'm originally from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I had current, I graduated high school and was going to college at Ohio State University, um, and then also attended uh, University of Cincinnati. Um, I was going to school for criminal justice, and I was looking to enter law enforcement after I completed my degree plan. Uh, while uh, applying for jobs, there weren't a whole lot of availabilities in regards to uh, police academies and that that had any openings. Um, so I thought about um, talking to an army recruiter. I went in and kind of went over what, I, what my goals were, some of my passions were, uh, what I was studying in school. Um, they suggested that military police might be a great route for me. Um, I was able to qualify for that job. So I went to basic training in September of 2007. Um, I did basic training at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Um, I did 22 weeks of training there where I learned everything um, about being a, a law enforcement officer uh, for the army and becoming an MP. Uh, after then, I was stationed in Fort Riley, Kansas. That was my first duty station. I spent a few years uh, there where I worked as a military patrol officer. And then I also deployed out of there from 2009 to 2010. I spent a year in Iraq, came back, uh, got to spend a year in Korea, uh, which was a great time for me. I really love traveling. I like to, to see new cultures, uh, experience new food, and just experience new, uh, new people. So uh, having that time in Korea was great for me. Um, after that, um, I was also going to school for business administration at the same time. And so after my first five years of the Army, I decided to transition my job over, uh, where I then became a human resources uh, N NCO. Uh, with, with that being said, I worked a little bit better with my business administration portion, so I transitioned into that. I did that for three years uh, before the Army uh, asked me to be a recruiter and come out and get to talk to young men and women. Um, about some of the opportunities that were given to me, uh, which leads me to where I'm at today. Uh, I've been in the Army for 13 years. Um, it's been a great benefit for me and my family. I am married. Um, I've been married for about three years now, and I have a three-year-old son, uh, soon to be four. Uh, so what I'd like to do now at this point now is introduce you to one of the other recruiters here at the station. Uh, this is Sergeant First Class Stewart. He'll kind of give you a little bit of background about himself. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, like he said, it's our first class steward. I've been in the Army for 13 years, come next month. Um, I am a 25 Whiskey, which is in the IT field. I've got numerous CompTIA certifications and classes, along with a lot of Cisco classes. So I went, I joined in March of 2008, and I went to basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Then I attended my uh, military job training at Fort Gordon, Georgia. I've been stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, uh, Grafenbeer, Germany for three years, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and now I'm currently a recruiter here in Galesburg, Illinois. I've been doing this for two years and I got about a year left to see where the journey takes me next. I am married uh, 10 years. I have three kids and I grew up in Alabama. All right, thank you, Sergeant Stewart. Uh, we do have one other recruiter. He can make it here today. Uh, he's on his way to Chicago, uh, but that's our first class Maine, and he'll introduce himself on a later date uh, we'll, as we do more job fairs, you'll get to meet him. Uh, some of the things that the Army has to offer that I'd just like to talk about um, before we you know, start taking some questions is, the Army has over 150 different job opportunities. Uh, we have everything from the medical field, uh, to engineers, human resources, 
uh, combat related jobs. So we, we have a job for that suits pretty much everybody or in everything. And one of the great things about the army is you get to select your job. Um, you take the ASVAB test, which is the armed services vocational aptitude and battery test. And once you take that, we get your score and you, we show you everything that you qualify for and everything that we have available. And you'll get to, we'll go over each job with you uh, that you qualify for and kind of show you the benefits um, that can be attached to that. And then you'll know all of that long before uh, you, you start your journey um, into becoming a soldier. So that's one of the, the big things I'd, I'd like to talk about um, when it comes to jobs. And then I'd like to open it up to some, some questions and from the field and then we'll kind of go from there. Fantastic, thank you both for that brief overview and presentation and introduction of yourselves, much appreciated. So can you kind of go over what the recruitment process would look like for somebody that was interested in joining the Army, just generally speaking? Absolutely, so the general uh, recruitment process, it all starts with talking to one of us. Um, you can go online uh, and find a lot of different information about the Army. Um, but it's all going to lead you back to, to having a conversation with one of us. And all we're going to do is facilitate that conversation. We're going to talk about your goals, your passions, uh, what, what you're interested in personally, what you're interested in um, career-wise, and kind of go over the benefits of the Army and how that works to help you, one, meet your goals, uh, and two, find that job that you're, that you're looking for in the career field that you're looking for. Um, and that's all starts with just having a conversation with us. It's very low threat um, and, and all it is is just a conversation. We just help kind of facilitate your, your goals and your passions. And then we show you how the army can work into fi fixing um, and meeting into those goals and passions. Fantastic, thank you for that response, sir. And another question I have from, for you is how long does that process typically take? Let's say somebody comes into the door, wants to speak with you, they're interested in joining, they take the necessary steps and they're actively engaged and involved in wanting to join. How long does that process typically take from the point of origin to the point of uh, where folks are actually, you know, sworn in and they're ready to go? That's a great question. Uh, thank you for that. And the, the average time is generally about 14 days, um, anywhere from 10 to 14 days from start to finish. Uh, you come in, you talk to us, uh, we get you scheduled to take the test. And then once you're test qualified, we can schedule you your physical, uh, we, we take care of the getting you set up for your physical, you select your job with us, you go do your physical, and then you enlist. So that process generally takes anywhere from about 10 to 14 days, uh, sometimes a little, a uh, little longer, depending on uh, certain individual schedules, and we kind of work around, you know, college classes, school, and that kind of thing. But um, generally speaking, uh, with, with somebody that's actively interested and no other issues uh, come up about 10 to 14 days. Fantastic. Thank you for that thorough response, sir. The next question that I have, and I'm sure it's one that a lot of folks have when, you know, considering joining the armed forces is, what are some of the standard benefits that uh, the organization might offer uh, folks? And then you could even elaborate on that and perhaps, um, you know, provide any sort of fringe benefits that might also apply as well. Absolutely. Uh, some of the Army benefits uh, that you're going to find through us is uh, your medical and dental care. On the, especially on the active side, you're not going to have any medical or dental care costs. Um, it's going to it's going to be provided for you. Uh, we have professional grade sports facilities at all of our bases, uh, like pools, golf courses, and gyms. Uh, we have rec centers everywhere. Um, you're going to have low cost, convenient shopping. Uh, we have what we call the post exchange and the commissary, and we also have a low cost life insurance of, of up to four hundred thousand dollars of of coverage for. Uh, a very reasonable and minimal um, uh, price out of your paycheck. And some of the other things that the, the Army has to offer you in regards to benefits is if you're already attending college, you have the potential for student loan repayment program or educational loan repayment uh, programs. And then also uh, when you're enlisting, if you qualify for, you can qualify for bonuses anywhere from uh, two to uh, $20,000. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that, sir. And so is there anything, you know, let's say that, um, you know, a potential recruit comes into the office, they're ready to, to begin the process and what have you. Is there anything that they need to come prepared with in order to kind of expedite that process? Anything that you would suggest? 
Absolutely. Some of the things I recommend bring into the appointment uh, would be your birth certificate, your high school diploma, um, if you're already graduated, or your college diploma and transcript. I'd also recommend bringing your social security card and a valid ID or driver's license. Um, and another thing that I always like to recommend is when people are coming for, uh, to speak with us, uh, if you have a, a parent, guardian, um, somebody that influences you on, in your life and some of the decisions that you make in your life that you like to, to talk to and kind of bounce, bounce ideas off of, uh, I really recommend that you bring them uh, to the appointment to speak with us as well. Uh, that way, I'm sure they're gonna have a lot of questions um, and that way we can kind of facilitate conversation between everybody and answer everyone's questions. Um, so by no means are we, are we just uh, asking you, the interested individual to come in, but we really recommend uh, bring your family and, and whoever else to that initial appointment uh, to come get that information from us. Awesome, thank you for that, sir. And I know another kind of big issue that folks have, you know, kind of at the forefront of their minds right now is, you know, the pandemic, COVID, um, you know, and kind of building off of that, how is, you know, how are the recruiting offices or more specifically the Army handling some of the COVID safety precautions? Are you guys allowing uh, virtual interviews or appointments, things of that nature? Are you requiring, you know, masks be worn in office, um, you know, things of that nature? Absolutely. That's a great question. So in regards to COVID, uh, I'll start off by talking about the uh, the office procedures. We are taking uh, in-person appointments and virtual. Uh, the only reason you don't see us having masks on right now uh, is due to having the being able to talk through the and see us through this presentation. But we are we wear masks in the office. And we also require those that come into the office to wear masks as mask as well. We do a temperature check at the door, uh, and we we take down your information, uh, take a temperature check, and before everybody comes into the office in the morning. Uh, we're cleaning all the desks, we're cleaning all the chairs, we're wiping everything down. Every time somebody new comes in, uh, they, and can we conduct their appointment? And we, we kind of vary the times of the appointments to make sure we're not overlapping and having an office full of people. Uh, we'll clean after uh, every appointment as well, re-wipe down everything uh, and try and keep everything uh, as, as clean as possible um, for, for you. Um, if for some reason you don't really wanna come in and you, would, you feel more comfortable in a virtual setting, uh, we have Microsoft Teams, we have Zoom, uh, we can do it through the telephone. Uh, we have a multitude of different things that we can facilitate your Army interview and even um, a lot of your processing uh, through virtual means. Fantastic. Thank you for that, sir. And so another question that I do have, you know, you referenced the ASVAB at, um, you know, in your initial point of the presentation here. Are there any resources that might be available for folks who might be taking that exam for the first time? Any sort of study guides or um, assistance that otherwise might be provided by your organization to help prepare folks for that kind of initial stage in the process? Absolutely. And so one of the things that you can go on, it's a website, it's called March to Success, M-A-R-C-H, the number two, success.com. Um, and that is an, an Army-based website and that can help you study for the ASVAB. Um, and not only can it help you study for the ASVAB, but it can also help you with your ACTs and your SAT scores, because a lot of the questions on there are similar. Um, so you'll see a lot of um, different things that, that will work towards not only the ASVAB, but some of those other secondary tests uh, for those high school kids that are getting ready to, um, you know, preparing for college and taking those other tests. Uh, it's a great website and it has a great tool. Uh, you can sign up for it. It's completely free um, and it'll, it'll walk you through different categories and different portions of the test. Um, there's study material on there, and then there's also some practice tests that are kind of, you know, have you get a comfort level of where where the, where you're at on the test or what you need to study on. Uh, it is definitely a great tool, and I recommend uh, that everyone checks it out if they're looking at taking the ASVAB. Fantastic. Thank you for providing that resource, sir. So another question that I do have, and I do ask this on some of my other events that might be geared more towards the civilian sector, but I think this is an applicable question as well. Do you have any restrictions on tattoos, uh, hair color, piercings, things of that nature? I'm sure the Army has a lot of requirements that you guys have to meet. Absolutely. That is a, a very great question. Uh, I'll start with the tattoos. Uh, in regards to the tattoos, you can have um, all the tattoos you want, as long as they're not on your hands, neck, or face. Uh, but with that being said, um, they can't be um, degrading uh, towards uh, any particular race or ethnicity. They can't be gang related. 
Uh, they can't be vulgar or anything like that. Um, but you are allowed to have tattoos just as long as they're not on your hands, neck, or face. And when I say on your hands, um, pretty much past the wrist bone, and then for your and then your neck and your face. Um, in regards to uh, piercings, uh, we're unable to for people that have uh, gauged ears, ear piercings are completely fine. Those those are no issue. Um, however, if we can see light through the the earlobe and it, it is open it up and it, it can't close on its own, um, that does become an issue and would be a disqualification as well. Uh, in regards to hair color and haircuts, um, you can come into the army with any kind of hair or hair color you want. However, once you're once you're in the army and training, you can't have any any wild colors like your pinks or blues or anything like that. It has to be a you know a, a normalized hair color. Um, and, but for the males, you will get a haircut uh, at basic training. Fantastic! Thank you for that thorough response, sir. Then, kind of. In tandem with that question, if you will, I know another question that a lot of folks have is, are any, you know, what is the nature of the background checks that are performed? And then would certain offenses like misdemeanors or, you know, simple drug offenses, would those be disqualifying factors for folks that might be interested in joining the Army as well? Can you elaborate on that, sir? Absolutely. So everybody that's processing and, and wanting to, to join the Army, uh, part of their process does lead us to uh, doing a background investigation for you, a background check. Uh, we do an FBI fingerprint background check. Um, it's, it's virtual, you come in, uh, we take all your virtual fingerprints and it gets sent off uh, to the FBI. They do a background check and then they send us the results for that. Um, for some law, there is some things that we can and can't work with or that requires uh, additional things that we have to do on our end uh, called a waiver. Um, so misdemeanors and things of that nature, uh, depending on what they are, nonviolent crimes and, and everything. Uh, we're, we're able to work with some, um, but we can't work with, with everything. Um, if there's a large number of felonies or so there's a multitude of different things that we have to look at. Um, it, would, it would take me the rest of our, our time allotted to kind of go over all of that. However, um, it can be a disqualifier, but it's definitely something we would have to, to discuss with that person individually. Understood, thank you for that response, sir. Another question that I do have for you, and I know uh, you and your colleague there kind of briefly went over uh, your own, you know, personal stories within the organization, but can you kind of just give an overview of what the opportunities for advancement might be within the organization and then highlight any uh, success stories perhaps that you might have had from a recruit? Absolutely. So some of the great things about the Army is we have some of the fastest promotions out of all the branches. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that you're going to move up a little bit faster. Uh, we're the largest branch, the largest organization, and we have a lot to offer. Um, so when it comes to um, your, your pay and things of that nature, there are certain uh, milestones you hit with the Army uh, where you can get promoted. Um, within two years, you can be in, go from being an E1 to an E4. Uh, but there's also things that you can do while, while you've enlisted uh, recently, but you haven't gone to basic training yet, we can also help you get promoted um, all the way to E3 and sometimes E4 with college um, before you even leave for basic training and put you on a little bit higher of a pay scale. Um, of course, you know, E4s make more than E1 and in reference to the pay scale. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of things that we can offer. And uh, we've had a lot of great success stories of people that, that have come in um, anywhere from an E1 or even if they have a college degree come in as an E4 um, and they're being very successful um, and they're, they're, they're making great strides and making a careers out of it and, and plan on retiring. They've uh, I've had multiple people come in that they, they just wanted to do the army for a couple of years, receive some of the great benefits that they have and kind of use it as a stepping stone and then found out that you know, the army was a great fit for them. It ended up becoming a career long thing and uh, they're doing very well and they look to be retiring and retiring at a young age. Uh, so, you know, joining out uh, for myself, if I were to do 20 years, you know, retiring at the age of 42 and uh, still having time to probably get another job and, you know, enjoy, enjoy life after that. So there's definitely a lot of great opportunities uh, for advancement uh, within the Army. Fantastic. Thank you for that response, sir. And it's kind of another question that came to mind here while you were giving the responses. Can you kind of explain the process or the differentiation, I guess, between uh, 
active duty, and then perhaps the reserves. And do you recruit for both of those? Absolutely, that is a great question. So we do recruit for both active duty and army reserves. Um, and to kind of put it into simplistic terms, active duty uh, would be like your full-time job. Uh, so you're gonna do it five, uh, five days a week. Uh, you're gonna travel with, uh, with the active duty army. You'll get stationed uh, somewhere outside of your home state um, and you'll do your job there and you'll get to travel, see the world uh, possibly. Um, I got to go to Korea, which was great. Um, we have bases all over the United States and bases all over the world for anywhere from Germany, Italy, Japan. Um, and then on the Army Reserve side, it's more of your uh, part-time job. So you do uh, one weekend a month and then two weeks of training in the summertime uh, for a particular job uh, of your choosing. And uh, in regards to the reserves, uh, the reserves are all combat support jobs. There are no combat jobs in the Army Reserves. Uh, those are all on the active duty side, uh, but the active duty side also has non-combat jobs as well, uh, what they call combat support jobs. Fantastic, thank you for that, sir. That was the last question that I had for you, but I do wanna give you an opportunity to include any sort of information that perhaps maybe you feel uh, wasn't covered thoroughly or you know anything that you might've accidentally overlooked. I wanna give you that opportunity right now to uh, be able to cover that. Absolutely. So there's a lot of different benefits and a lot of different things that the Army has to offer. Um, and it would take more time than what I, what I have allotted to, to discuss that uh, for people today. Um, but what I do like to, to put out there and recommend is to uh, reach out to us. Um, feel free to come in uh, to the station, uh, set, call us, get set up an appointment. Uh, we'd be more than happy to talk to anyone, answer all their questions, and, and really take that time to, to sit down with you and answer all of the questions in a and then a very open setting. And then we can always go from there. I mean, if it's something you're interested in and you wanna move forward, we can always look at, at processing and, and taking you towards that next step. But if it's something that maybe you don't feel like that it is gonna work for you, um, we're more than happy to you know, have at least given you that information uh, to make that decision for you. And it's, it's like I said, again, it's, it's, it's no pressure. Um, it's just getting that information and then letting you make that you know, decision. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. And I just want to thank you again for uh, you know, requesting this event and, and being here today and presenting this information for the folks out there who are interested in joining the Army. Again, I just want to thank all who attended. Uh, you can find uh, the recording to this event on the employer booth that you'll see on the screen right here. It will be posted on Illinois WorkNet later today. Uh, that video will also be included on Illinois WorkNet's a virtual job fair playlist on YouTube as well. And again, that will be uploaded later today. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time and, and thank you for helping facilitate this today for us. Absolutely, you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.